Good evening guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Overkill bringing you another course for Basic Fundamentals MiG-29. Today we will talk about landing. Um, we'll go over ILS, um, which I highly recommend you use whenever possible. And then we'll um, demonstrate a non-assisted landing, which is significantly trickier, a lot of eyeball work. Um, before we get into that, I want to get into a couple of caveats with the MiG-29 that I've debated whether to throw in here. Um, and I should say when to put in them. I wish I had remembered on the first tutorial I would have done it then. Um, but getting right into it. So let's talk about the air brake first. Okay, so we have the speed brake on the back of the aircraft. Let me get those stupid labels off. Okay, so we have the speed brake here. In this configuration, the air brake will deploy. Okay, but if we have a center tank, okay, or if the landing gear is down, the air brake will not deploy. It is important to remember that as obviously if you are coming in hot, if you need to significantly reduce your speed for whatever reason, and you really need that air brake, if, uh, if you have a centerline fuel tank, or if your landing gear is down, the air brake will not deploy. Okay, it won't extend. The center line tank makes sense to me because of where the center line tank is, um, it looks like the um, bottom uh, wing of the air brake, okay, so right underneath there between the two nacelles, um, based on where the center tank goes, it looks like it would hit, okay, so that kind of makes sense to me. Um, why it won't deploy on when the landing gear is down, I'm not quite sure. I tried to look online and couldn't really find anything that gave me a solid answer, so I guess that's just one of those things we're going to have to just adapt to. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about real quick is nose wheel steering high range. Okay, so remember the MiG-29 has your standard nose wheel steering, and then you can hold left alt in Quebec, and that will increase the nose wheel steering maneuvering range. Okay. If your flaps are down, so you're on the ground and your flaps are down, um, the high range will not work, okay? So if you're trying to make a tight turn and you're driving yourself crazy, pulling your hair out, trying to figure out why it won't turn tight, check and see if your flaps are down. If your flaps are down, bring them up, then you should be able to make your tight turns, okay? Um, I think those were the only two that I had um, that were sort of off the wall. If you guys have any questions or any further comments on those, I'd love to hear them below. Um... I wasn't 100% positive, so I'm just going to throw this out here. One more thing on the air brake. I believe it also may be affected with flaps down as well. But um, I sort of, by the time that my flaps deployed, I didn't really need the air brake. But um, I heard or saw a post somewhere where somebody was stating that also with the flaps down, the air brake would not deploy. But I haven't confirmed that one yet. So just something to be aware of as well. All right, getting into landing. Um, Landing this thing is like giving a cat a bath, okay? You gotta hold on for dear life. Um, I completely understand now why MiGs have reputations of being the widow makers of the world. Uh, she's she's a pain in the butt, man, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it, took, it took quite a while. I probably did probably 50 or 60 landings before I even started to really feel comfortable with it. Um, it's real prone to coming in hot. It's real prone to dropping out of the sky. Uh, you blow tires. You smash the thing down. If you bounce, kiss your rear end goodbye. Um, she loves to tumble if she bounces. Um, don't recommend bouncing. That's, that's not a fun experience. Okay. This... Both of these landings are going to be straight in approaches, okay? So you can see the runway out there right in front of us. Um, on the end of the navigation tutorial, I will show you how to use ILS to bring you home, but in today's tutorial, we're just going to go over how to get the aircraft down. You can see that we're approximately 10.5 uh, kilometers away. We're starting at an altitude of approximately 800 feet uh, radar altimeter, okay? So a couple things I'm going to tell you right off the bat to be aware of so they don't shock the crap out of you. Um, as in every course I think I've said so far, trim, 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 trim. Um, you want to trim her nose up to approximately five degrees, okay? So you want the horizon line at about the five degree line, and we'll see what that looks like here in a minute. It's sort of like, uh, for those of you who are flying the Hornet, very similar. Um, it's sort of almost like an on-speed goal, okay? You want to keep her about five degrees nose up, um, and it tends to, tends to really make it nice. Um... Your descent rate, we want to put it at about um, about 500 meters per minute, um, give or take. Okay, um, anything faster than that, and you're a piano hitting the ground. 
okay um, the <laughs> the sh two shocks of the life um, first one not too terrible but uh, get ready when you go flaps down and the flaps actually extend so remember we have the slats on the leading edge of the wing so those will drop regardless and then you'll get a slight flap um, descent um, but once you drop below um, gosh what was it I want to say about 400 kph you know kilometers per hour uh, the flaps will fully uh, extend okay um, when that happens the nose is gonna dip okay but the bad one is when you drop that landing gear when you drop the landing gear the nose is going to come down she gets incredibly unstable for a second um, she she stabilizes back out once the uh, once the air uh, the uh, aerodynamics of the aircraft have sort of stabilized to the massive shift right um, and that's common with any aircraft when you drop your landing gear you're putting drag in very weird places over the surface of the aircraft so that's not incredibly uncommon but with the MIG it is nasty so a little tip is as you are ready to bring your gear down right as you're going to bring the gear down give your stick a little back pull as the gear is coming down and it and I demonstrate that here a little bit and you'll be able to tell hopefully when the gear comes down um, but uh, definitely made a big difference as far as uh, stability and pre prepping yourself for the landing the circle that we see right in the center of the HUD is your um, navigation cursor to the um, outer marker so you can see in the bottom left of the HUD that it currently says return by the way I went into the settings I made sure that the um, avionics language was set to native I don't know why it's still in English I don't know if I did something wrong or forgot to hit OK or something so again you guys I apologize I really want to teach the aircraft in its native language but you know I can't win them all I guess at this point plus I would have absolutely no chance in hell of pronouncing them right I do not speak Russian I think it's a beautiful language love to learn it but yeah anyway I digress um, so you can see that we're in return. What return is is getting you back to the outer marker. So it's basically the initial um, for the approach, right? It's getting you to the initial point of the approach. Then what's going to happen is you're going to see it switch to landing. Um, when it switches to landing, that's that's when it's actually putting you on the glide slope and bringing you down to the ground. With ILS, um, it always tends to guide you more towards the center of the runway. With the F-15, that was kind of a pain in the butt and only because she didn't have a drag chute. The nice thing about the MiG-29, she's got a drag chute and it, it stops you on a dime. I mean, it, it's incredibly handy. So, um, with the F-15, I, I taught people to sort of put the ILS indicator slowly, a little bit above their, their uh, uh, flight path marker. Um, in this case, we're gonna put it right in the center and just bring her down as she's designed. And the second one will go for the uh, piano keys. Okay, so we're going to start our approach here. We're in the return mode. We're heading to the outer marker. We're at 800 feet, or uh, excuse me, 800 meters ground level, um, and we're cruising at about 600 kilometers per hour. So unpausing the server. Okay. So you can see that I'm keeping the flight path marker right in the center um, of the uh, ILS uh, guide ring, slowly reducing my speed. You can see there in the bottom left there that we've got the air brakes deployed. There's my five degree trim mark that I'm trying to hold. Now at about 400 here, I'm going to bring the landing gear down. So I'm going to give her a quick jerk when I pull that, when I bring the, the gear down here, just a minute. Really trying to keep that five degree trim line, trying not to overspeed her. Now, watch here in a second, you're going to see that return change into the landing mode. Okay, there's landing mode. You can see the flaps are down. I know she pitched. See, I'm bringing her back into the center here. Okay, so there right there we see the air brakes are deployed, so the comment about flaps and air brakes not working together is false. Cool. 
Good to know. All right, so landing gear is coming down, and you guys saw that I jerked the nose up there real quick. Okay, she gets, and you can see that she gets real rocky. She gets, she gets real nasty there for a second, but then she smooths back out. We're holding our descent rate, and like I said, approximately 500. Got a little hot right there. Keeping that uh, flight path marker right with the guideline. Now, I do want to show you something else here um, that I didn't mention before. So you see that we have the outer ring. Okay, back up here. If you look in the center of my flight path marker, we have two rings on it. Okay, you have a small ring and a large ring. The smaller ring is called the ILS deviation circle. Okay, so it's basically you always want to be aiming for that. Your goal is to put the small circle inside the big circle. The big circle is where we're actually projected to fly to. Okay, that's where the altitude and angle that we want to be at. But at the end of the day, you always want to make sure that the little circle is where you're aiming at because the little circle actually leads you to the runway. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And at the end of the navigation course, like I said, I'll go over how to use ILS to bring us home. And you're going to see this thing in action a whole lot more. But the objective here for if you're doing just straight in approaches and practices is you want to make sure that these the small circle and the large circle are just as you see them right there. Okay, we want them right in, on top of each other. Okay, so pulling back, still reducing our speed. About 400, trying to keep that uh, 500 feet, uh, or excuse me, 500 meter descent rate. Okay, and I dip down there a little bit so I can start getting onto my uh, five degree trim. Slowly still reducing speed. I found that a good approach speed is about uh, 300 uh, kilometers per second. Or per hour, excuse me, per second. Gosh, that'd be hauling ass. Okay, so we're right on speed. We got our 500 uh, meter descent rate. Got our flaps down. Five degree trim out. We're at 320 uh, kph. And now we're just going to sort of guide her in. We're just going to hold it, try to hold that position. Okay, so the first beeping that you hear there is we've hit the outer marker. Now, it's very much, again, you Hornet drivers, um, this is going to look real familiar to you. Um, everything is throttle right here, guys. I, I can't stress that enough. Don't be pitching your nose up and down. You want to do that as little as possible. Once you get that five degree and you got your circles lined up the way they are right now, everything is throttle, okay? If, if you notice that your start, if the circles are starting to drop below your flight path marker, you want to pull the power back. If you notice that the circles are starting to go above your flight path marker, you want to add power. Okay, so everything once you get into this configuration is throttle, 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 up and down. The a lot of people try to do like a, a set it and forget it, right? You know, you just oh, I'm going to put my throttle at 40% and boom, I, it's going to be great. I don't need anything else. Okay, that doesn't work in in reality. In reality. Um, the throttles are just you're constantly on the throttle off off and on off and on off and on off and on you know you got so many different variables that are going to affect you you know wind shears wind direction wind speeds gusts everything like that's going to either require a reduction or an addition of of power okay um so you should be constantly adjusting your throttle okay don't ever take your hands off your throttle in, in a landing. And don't be afraid to add it just because you're close to the ground. I know you want to keep it slow and steady and make that pretty landing, but don't be afraid to add power. If you need to add power, you add power. Okay? So coming in, keeping everything lined up, holding that 5-degree trim line, holding it about 310 uh, kilometers per hour. Still holding that 500 meter descent rate. Okay, see that right there? All right, so now we've hit the inner marker. Now I'm getting a little high here, so I'm gonna pull some power off. Okay, now I'm gonna add power right there, 10 feet from the ground, I'm adding power. Okay, you do what you gotta do. And wheels down. We're gonna hold the nose up. You want to use that aerodynamic braking. We're holding the nose, holding the nose, holding the nose. Then we're going to hit um, Papa on our keyboard and deploy the drag chute. And you'll watch the uh, airspeed there drop pretty significantly. 
and actually and then we're going to apply our wheel brakes so if you have an axis great on your pedal if not it's uh, whiskey on your keyboard now the reason why the uh, drag chute on this I found out after the fact that uh, I sort of tapped the key twice so I deployed it and then cut it loose so ideally with the drag chute you hit Papa to deploy it and you want to do that about 270 uh, kph or below um, you don't want to do much faster than that otherwise it slams the nose down really hard and you can damage the nose wheel okay um, and then once you come down to you know about where we're at here or whenever you feel that you have a uh, controllable speed where you know you're gonna be able to stop the aircraft in time um, you can hit P again and it releases the chute okay so I know that was sort of crazy guys um, the I like I said this the ILS in this aircraft is really slick really slick I, I, I was very impressed from the first time I saw it. I know I've commented it, I think in two different videos now um, really nicely done uh, on this particular aircraft um, but she is a pain in the butt she, this is she's one of the most temperamental girls I think I've ever been with okay um, she's a pretty lady and she's one hell of a maneuverable lady but she's one of those ladies that's uh on the verge of out of control okay and she's the, the biggest thing to remember with her is she's always on the verge of out of control it doesn't matter what you're doing she wants to flip out okay so with that being said give me just a minute we're going to come back and we're going to see what the landing looks like without any uh navigation assistance all right okay so we're back on the mig 29 here we're coming in for uh another landing you can see that currently the ILS mode is engaged. I'm going to disable that in just a second here. Um, and by the way, you can do that by pressing the number one on your keyboard row. Um, and we're going to see what the landing looks like if ILS is unavailable. Um, and it's significantly harder. Um, so until you get very comfortable landing this aircraft, I highly recommend um, that you... Uh, maintain ILS approaches okay but in the interest of uh, being thorough here or trying to be anyway let's get after it so same conditions as before we're sitting at about 800 feet or uh, gosh, I'm never gonna get over it 800 meters radar we're pulling at about 650 kilometers per hour there's the disengage of the ILS so what we're gonna do here is I'm sort of I want you guys to sort of see where I stick the runway okay so I'm trimming out to five degrees right away right so because what I want to do is my goal is to be on the power the whole time I want to trim her out get her on speed kind of thing um, and then just use my power if I get too low get too high etc there's our trim pulling back to 390 knots continuing to slow gears down flaps down Again, I'm jerking the aircraft up like that to get her to slow down a little bit more where I want her. And now I'm going to trim her out and just keep adding or reducing that throttle based on how high I am. And what I'm trying to do here is if you see where I've sort of placed the runway through most of this tutorial here, if you look at the two uprights for the HUD, um, I'm sort of using the two bolt holes that you see right in front of our face on the head guard there. Um, and then the, uh, the vertical sort of angled upright there on on the on the uh, HUD uprights to sort of give myself a, a position to, to lock the runway into place um, I think pretty much as long as you pick a spot and you can hold that five degree trim line the biggest thing is you just don't want the runway to move you want to keep it about in the same spot and you can pretty much establish a glide slope okay again by adding and reducing power as long as you've got that five degree trim um, you know you may have a, a longer approach than, than others or, or or a more rapid descent but find a spot if you're ever in the situation uh, and fixate the runway on it right just lock the runway into one spot as best as you can so just like before we're holding our airspeed we're watching our descent rate notice the descent rate on the uh, VVI there okay the barometer Trying to keep it right about the same as, as what it was before, about 500, give or take. Now, obviously, this one isn't as pretty as before. I'm a lot lower than I wanted to be here. Now, with that being said, where I'm going for here, because it's a visual approach, I'm not using any uh, electronic guidance. 
I'm going for the piano keys, okay? So for those of you who don't know, the piano keys are the white keys that are at the very end of the runway. So you can see them coming into view now. So you see them right there, those those white keys. Those are what I'm aiming for. That's where I'm trying to put my, my main gear. I notice here I'm a little high. But once I get back to where I feel it's reasonable, I'm getting my trim right back up where it needs to be. Getting that nose back up. Starting to let my airspeed fall a bit. You can hear the engines. I'm up and down. I'm up and down. All right. And here we go. Nice, smooth in. Touchdown. A little bit of a bounce. Holding that nose up. Holding that nose up. There's Papa to deploy the drag chute. And you can see she pulls it down real quick. Watch our airspeed. Adding the wheel brakes. And then from here you can press Papa again on your keyboard or the P key to uh, drop the drag chute. Alright guys, so I know that that one was sort of a crazy one. Unfortunately, without the guidance, the ILS guidance, she's she's tricky to land. Um, you really have to have a good visual aspect and, and a visual reference to where you want to start. Um, I found that a good starting point, if you're... If you're unsure of yourself, you want to pull about uh, oh, 15 to 20 uh, kilometers out and be at an altitude of at least, I would say, 4,000 um, 4, meters above ground level. Okay? So, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I know this was sort of a crazy one. She's a hard one. Um, if you run into anything that uh, you guys find that you just can't grasp or... or or this information just didn't make enough sense, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to run it again um, and, and mix it up, find a different way to explain things. Um, as usual, if you guys did like the comment, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. Plus, by hitting the like button, you'll get notifications of new content coming out. Until the next time, guys, this is Overkill. I'll see you soon.